Today we're going to learn five professional prompt techniques used by prompt engineers that will take you to the next level when working with AI agents and LLM. So first of all, we're going to cover why does good prompting matter? I've got these tips from prompt engineering guides online, specifically referring to prompt engineering overview. If you haven't checked out the docs for this, you can head to Anthropic and they've got complete user guides with more information than we're going to cover today. But what we're going to do is deep dive into five not commonly known prompt engineering tips to help build success when interacting with LLMs and prompting them. So why does good prompting matter? From my experience with clients, it's where 90% of our workflow mistakes come from. And they're usually a result of good outputs from poor input prompts. It's also where we spend 90% of our time. So if you look at an average workflow in NAN for a client build, there might be a lot of different nodes, but actually the majority of time to ensure good outputs is actually just spent ensuring that we have a clear system prompt, clear user prompt, and the LLM fully understands the task that it's designed to do. So reason number one is we spend a lot of time and it causes a lot of mistakes. So good prompting reduces that. Second thing, if we have better and more concise prompts that are clearer, we're gonna use fewer tokens. So we're gonna end up costing the client and ourselves less. Number three goes without saying, better input quality prompts produce higher output quality. And this isn't just about the single output, this is about consistent, reliable results. The fifth is scalability. Good prompts produce consistent results, which allow us to scale to multiple workflows. The final reason why good prompting matters is a reduction in errors. Now we're just gonna jump down to the top five tips. The first is what Anthropic calls multi-shot prompting. But if we simplify it, it's actually just using examples. So not everyone I've seen uses clear examples in their prompts, but it's super important because if we were teaching a human how to do this process, what we would do is we rely on really clear examples so that it could learn from that. It's exactly the same when you're telling a, an LLM what task you need performing and how you expect the results to be. So by giving examples, clear examples in the text, we demonstrate rather than explain what the outputs we want are. So we've got an example scenario here where we're categorizing customer support tickets and inside the prompt, what we might put are a few examples of how we'd categorize based on certain tickets. If we had the input of where's my refund, it'd be the category of billing. What that's doing is giving clear examples of inputs and outputs that the LLM is then able to infer what type of output it might expect from a given input. The second tip is called chain of thought prompting. So similarly, if we treat this LLM like a human, we would help the human training to break down the problem into logical steps. We wouldn't tackle a large problem without breaking it down into logical steps because it would be too cumbersome as one piece. The same goes for an LLM. If you are able to give it some clear steps to help it break down, a problem, it's able to more effectively come up with an appropriate solution. So we've got an example here. We've got the same customer support ticket. And what we're going to do is inside our prompt, we're going to tell the LLM to think through this problem step by step. So we're going to say first, identify the main issue in the ticket, then consider which department handles this type of issue. And finally, assign the appropriate category. So this is a really basic example. And you can go into such a level of detail with these step by steps, but you can see that you've given it clear instructions on what actions you want the LLM to take. And that will help it break that problem down into logical steps and give us a more consistent result every time. The third tip is around how to structure the prompt in order to make it readily readable for the LLM. So what we've got here is XML tags. So XML tags are commonly used across the internet, in particular when you're building websites, 
they're used on the back end. For example, HTML code is written in XML tags. And what this does is really clearly structure the different parts of the web page as well. If you have one large paragraph of text and you are asking somebody to read and dissect that text, what you'd expect are clear headings and sections in order to understand the content and the context of that content. Computers are exactly the same. They need to understand the structure and XML tags help the LLM understand the structure of the data that you are inputting or the text you're inputting. We would use headings. They would use headings in the form of XML tags. And the reason XML tags are the optimal structure are LLMs like Anthropic were trained on data that were using XML tags. Other structures we could use are Markdown format or HTML, but actually XML tags are the optimal structure to use when you input your prompts. So an example of this here, we've got an opening XML tag and a closing XML tag. So each XML tag always has an opening and a closing. And it's if we wanted to write prompt in an XML tag, for example, we would have the open tag prompt. And then underneath the end of the prompt, we'd have the forward slash prompt. And what this signifies is if I just move this indent this, you can see it visually. Oops. What you can see here visually now is actually this is how the LLM would read it. So we've got a larger prompt and within that we've got some categorization rules that it needs to follow and a task so the llm by using these xml tags is able to break down these clear sections and therefore understand the content that we're passing into much like paragraphs and headings would for us when we're reading it as humans but for llms they're particularly good at reading xml tags so what we should do in our prompt is make sure that each section is clearly defined with an opening and closing tag. So if we were to add some examples in here, what we'd have is examples, here are examples, and then we'd close that up here with examples, just like that. The fourth tip is particularly useful for longer complex prompts. So it's less relevant for short prompts where there is one task to perform or one step. This is about chaining much more complex prompts together. That helps the LLM break down complex tasks into manageable steps for better accuracy. Again, we go back to the scenario of ticket handling. What we'd want to do is give the LLM a clear step-by-step -step guide on how to analyze the ticket, identify the urgency level, categorize the issue, and suggest a response template. By breaking that down into clear steps, the LLM is able to perform each step individually and then bring those steps together to return an answer at the end. The tip here is to put all long form context at the top of the prompt above the query, instructions and examples. So we'll use the same example of a customer service agent that is solving our customer queries or tickets and categorizing them. What we do is in the prompt, we might put a larger window of context in our XML tags, like we discussed in the previous tip. We might put all that context at the top of the prompt and then our query instructions and examples below that. So the reason we do this is LLMs when they are trained in particular for Anthropic, this is the order in which the information was passed to it. And therefore, if we follow that same order, it's more likely to appropriately understand the instructions that are passed to it. So something we might want to do in our example is put the context of customer conversation history for any previous tickets and system status above all of our query and examples and instructions. All of that context should go up front. If we follow all those rules and all those prompting tips, we should have a really clear prompt that's made up of a system prompt and a user prompt. But what that should do is give really clear instructions to the LLM and improve the consistency of our results and reliability of that LLM performing that same task on different input data each time. So what we've got here, and I'll attach this in an example below, 
is a very simple but clear and follows the rules prompt for our customer support agent categorizing tickets. So up front, you can see immediately we've got these XML tags saying, okay, this is the system configuration role like we do with every system prompt. Your primary task is to analyze support tickets and provide structured responses. So we've given it its primary task. For this example, we don't have that long context. So we've not included that at the top of the prompt. We've set in XML tags some clear rules with step-by-step -step, like we discussed. So always analyze tickets step-by-step. -step. This gives it the instruction to think through in a logical step what it's being asked of. Categorize into, and then we've given some examples here so that it understands the output that it should give technical, billing, authentication, or general, assign a priority, and generate concise professional responses. Again, there's lots of things we could do to enhance this prompt further, but what it's doing is using those rules and making the LLM give us consistent results each time. We've then put in some examples. So this is the multi-shot prompting, and at the end of the query, we've actually given it the instructions process all tickets following this exact format. So we've talked a little bit about output formats, which we've not covered in this video, but also a really important part of every prompt is an output format. Maintain a professional, helpful tone, focus on clear, actionable solutions. So this prompt would give us clear, consistent results every time, which is what we need to achieve all of these things. So lower cost slash fewer tokens used, much higher consistent quality outputs. We're able to use our prompts in multiple places. We're able to reduce our errors and spend less of our time working on refining our prompts and more time on improving the workflows. And that's it, thanks for watching.